Welcome back to part three of Virtual Administrator's Kaseya for Tax webcast. In this segment, I want to talk to you about the one thing that you'll probably use more than anything else, and that's Live Connect. Live Connect is where we spend most of our days when we're supporting clients, and it's very easy to get into. Remember those icons that we talked about in the last segment? Well, not only do they tell you the status of your machine, but they also serve two additional purposes. The first thing that happens is if you hover over an icon for half a second or so, it's going to bring up what's called a quick view screen. And this quick view screen will give you a number of shortcuts into different parts of Kaseya. And you'll find it very useful when you just want to check on a log or look at uh, disk, you know, how the disks are configured. But we're going to spend most of our time talking about actually talking about Live Connect. And that's the second function that this icon uh, provides. What you do is simply click on it. And when you click on it, it's going to load in a separate tab. And it's going to bring up this screen. I'm going to position the, uh, the viewer a little bit so you can see up there in the top corner. You're going to see uh, a thumbnail of what your customer is actually seeing on, on their screen. So about every five seconds or so, it's going to send an update. And this allows you just to see if they're busy using their machine so you, know, you don't interrupt them. Um, it can be turned off uh, by your administrator and may be turned off by your administrator. So if you're seeing a lock button up there, uh, that's possible. But this is Live Connect. You'll notice that um, in, in the top pane, we have just information about the machine, uh, the amount of RAM and the CPU, and over to the right, the familiar um, CPU and memory. So you can kind of look at performance a little bit. But the real power is down along the left-hand side, and that's all these different options that we have inside Live Connect. And I want to spend some, some time going through those with you. Particularly, I want to focus on the, the first part is um, items that you will use when you're just trying to support the client but not necessarily um, remote controlling the machine. And I think that's probably going to start with Task Manager. It's probably the most important one. So when we click on Task Manager, it actually brings up, it's not just your typical Task Manager that you're familiar with. It actually has a number of different functions in there. You can start seeing these tabs. We actually are now seeing all of the processes that are running on that customer's machine. And just like if you were sitting there, you can click on the CPU and uh, twice there, and you can actually see you know, the, the utilization of each process. We have the ability to click on a process and stop it. So it's, it's really great for being able to uh, shut down something that might be in the way or looking to see what, um, you know, customers complaining that the system is running a little slowly. You can kind of look and see what's, um, you know, monitor what's happening there and what's using up the CPU. The services tab is obviously great. Um, you're, you're able to go in there and stop and start services. You'll notice that the customers still, they're actually working in the background here while we're doing this. So they don't, they actually don't even know that we've connected and we're able to uh, do all these different things Let's say they had a problem with their print queue. Uh, we could go down to um, the print management and, um, and basically the print spooler, and we could stop that print spooler. And then we could actually go in using uh, another function, which is file manager or the command line, and we could navigate in and, and actually delete files out of their queue, come back here, restart it, or issue even a, a issue a command. We'll talk about the, the command shell in a second. So we've got the services, we've got performance metrics, much like you see up at the top here, but it's got, it adds the network and disk IO, so you can actually look at um, what's going on on the machine specifically. We have the ability to see what users are created on that machine. Uh, we can reboot the machine, and we can also look at users and groups that are set up on that machine. So anyway, wonderful, wonderful tool to manage, and again, we're doing this without um, interrupting the user. So let's talk about the command shell. And this is, there's really, I don't really need to explain a whole lot because all you do is click on command shell and you'll notice you have the familiar uh, prompt, you know, DOS prompt is, is what I always call it. And again, we can sit here and, and change directories um, and basically do, you know, do things on that machine. And it's just as if we're sitting there. And again, we haven't interrupted the user at all. The next thing I want to talk about is event viewer. 
So again, if you have a client that's having a problem with a particular product, you can go into Event Viewer and it will, uh, it will basically pull all of the events from the machine. And you should note that this Event Viewer is different when, when uh, you get into some of the more advanced Kaseya, we do what's called Event Log Monitoring. But in those cases, we only listen to specific things. This is the entire uh, event. So you can use this to look at different events, you know, it, um, click on it, it'll actually bring you to event ID. Um, you can open up the event and, and read more information about what's going on there. So hopefully this will help you. And obviously here's all the different um, events on the left hand side, the different um, types of events, and you can pull, pull them up and look at them. So we even have a uh, registry editor. So we can go in there and make changes or look at certain things in the registry. Um, it is important to note that you can only do H key local machine. Notice the H key local user hive is not available because it's being used by the customer. So we would have to log in in order to be able to do that. But in many cases, you can find what you need in the H key local machine. And probably the last thing uh, that you'll find use for, again, without interrupting the client, is the file manager. So the file manager is kind of like a little mini FTP. You, you bring it up and what it's going to do is it allow you to copy or put files from your machine to their machine. So if you need to transfer a file or grab a file from them, maybe it's a log file or a text file from, from an application. Uh, again, you're able to do this um, all without interrupting the user's day-to-day um, -day activities and makes you more efficient so you don't have to you know make a phone call, ask them to borrow the machine, log on, kick them off. Everybody's happy about that. And as you can see, these are all the drives on my computer here, and then these are the local drives on the remote site. And we can drill down and basically, um, again, pull and push files uh, back and forth by simply just copying and dragging them um, from one, one directory to another, or one drive to another. Another option you may want to look at is the agent data. Now, the agent data really just has one useful, uh, maybe two useful tabs. The pending procedures is, is very informative. Uh, one thing you need to understand is that everything that happens in Kaseya is a procedure or a script. So this little small agent that we talked about at the beginning that lives on the computer, it really is so small it doesn't have a lot of intelligence built into it itself. Its main purpose in life is to pass information back and forth between the computer and the Kaseya server. So everything that's done is done through a series of scripts. If we want to audit the machine, that's a script that runs. If we want to patch the machine, that's a script that runs. So this particular uh, tab will give you a list of all of the procedures that are pending. And you can see the uh, recurring interval. You'll see when they're, ex when they're scheduled to be executed. And then in the area down below where you have the procedure history, you can actually see the results of those procedures in terms of when did, when did they last run, whether they were successful um, or not. Um, other than knowing, uh, let's say you, you click something and you, you're expecting it to run and for some reason that script's not running correctly, always come in here and look at the pending procedures. And by the way, you can also get to that. Remember we talked about hovering over the icon. That's an, one, of the, one of the things there is pending procedures as well. So you can see what's pending and you also have the uh, history right there too, the procedure history. But um, if you had a client that was complaining their machine was running very slowly at lunchtime, you might want to come in and look at the procedure history and see, is there something that we're doing at, at lunchtime? Oh yeah, well, we happen to be running this, uh, this audit. Um, well, chances are that's not interrupting them because it's, it's pretty background, but you never know. You know, you may want to just look at it and then maybe go up here and reschedule it or pause it um, and, and uh, you know, see if they complain again. Uh, the other tab that is useful is the agent logs. And what you can do is pull up an, a series of different logs here to see what's going on. The agent procedure log is much like we looked at the pending procedures, except that there's detail, there's more detail about what happened with that particular script. The alarm action log or monitor action logs, you can see if there's any, any alarms that have happened. Uh, in this case, there haven't been any. The patch status, agent settings, eh, not, not, not something you use probably all the time. Kaseya has the ability to uh, 
pull documents or store documents about the uh, the machine and also grab files from the computer and you can actually see those documents here if you if you end up uh, doing that so for the next part of this I want to actually show you the, the remote uh, desktop access I'm gonna go ahead and switch to another machine because I I don't want to bother uh, the user while we're doing this so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and, and remote control this machine that nobody's logged into so again I just clicked on the icon I'm going to wait for the thumbnail to come up. There it is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the desktop access. Now before you click on that, let me just show you a couple of tricks. Click on the little down arrow and go to settings. And what I like to do in the settings is basically I normally use VNC. That's my recommended. You can use RDP if you like. Um, I automatically connect it with those settings. I tell it to embed it in this window and then I tell it to automatically hide the Live Connect panels, both panels. Okay, and I'm gonna show you why I do that. You do have the option of um, bouncing it out to a new window or even running it full screen, but just from experience, if you're um, trying to control multiple machines, if you have them uh, bounced out or obviously full screen, um, it becomes a little harder to keep track of them. I find it much easier just to have tabs across the top and I know, I know where everything is, and I've had three, four machines open at once with no problems. So let's go ahead and just, um, let me just go ahead and, and click the uh, desktop access there, and you can see how those panels hid for you, and basically now it's making the connection to the, that machine, and there's our screen. Now their screen is considerably bigger than mine. Um, I've got a fairly small screen here for training purposes. You do have this option to fit to window, so it will try to fit it inside the window for you. And then you can send the control alt delete and you can basically um, log in and, and remote control. When you're done, you can just disconnect from it. It'll bring you back to the main pane and then you can go about and do other things. So the last couple of things I want to talk about um, are, are basically relating just to information about the machine. I want to go into the audit information. And this is a wonderful um, source of um, info and, and statistics about the machine. And some of the favorites that I look at, obviously the first screen is nice. Um, the installed applications tab is a little, a little um, bit of a misnomer um, because what it's really doing is it's making a list of all the executables in the machine. Um, this particular machine uh, has over 3,000, almost 4,000 EXEs. So, when you say installed apps, it really means installed or, or residing executables because they don't even have to be installed on the machine. If you really want to see what's installed, jump over to the Add Remove Programs and there you can see the applications. And you'll notice, um, let me drag this down just a little bit, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen here there is um, page 1 of 19 so you can control um, you know flipping pages you can also set it to display more things on the page if you like all right move that back up uh, software licenses uh, can be very useful you can actually go in and see um, license keys and that sort of thing um, we can look at the printers that are assigned to this machine we can look at um, hardware that's there including in many cases it's got model numbers of things like your hard drives um, all this can be fairly useful if you ever have to rebuild a machine and you weren't sure what you know Intel network card was installed. All that information is here, even what printers are there. Um, the system information tab is probably um, the most useful. Um, it's got the manufacturer, it's got the serial number of the machine, and it's got a lot of other information about uh, processor. Um, we actually track warranty um, information. That's a, that's a custom field that was created. And if you're on one of our um, internal systems, we, we update this information for you. That it's not a standard function. Um, but you can scroll through this and you can see how much memory. So let's say the customer needs to upgrade memory and they've got four gigs of RAM in there. You want to add another four gigs, but do they have four one gig modules or two two gig modules? So by knowing how the memory is configured, it can save you a trip out there to look inside. In this case, this machine has a single uh, four gig stick and um, it even shows the banks and everything. Um, you know, onboard devices, ports, uh, slots, uh, probably not as, as useful, but uh, I use the memory 
and um, the, this information too is, is quite useful. Uh, if you'll notice that the, the product name is underlined, if you click on that, it will take you to Lenovo's website and uh, in some cases take you right to that model machine or um, in, in case of like Dell, sometimes to the individual machine itself. Uh, so right, that's, uh, that's basically the audit. Um, and now we're, I think we're done. There's a couple of other features here that, I, that you can play with. We don't use it too often, the video chat, um, the VPN, the ability to do some antivirus scans. Uh, the chat window can be useful if you need to communicate with the customer. You can just click on chat. And if you're using the ticketing system, Kaseya's ticketing system, you can access it right from here as well.